Okay, well, thank God my mom is here. Hey, Amen, lovely woman of God. I like to recognize her all the time because she's my mama. Amen, amen. You know, your mama believe in you when don't nobody else believe in you. Amen. Your mama believe in you when you don't need to be believed in. <laughs> That's just mommy, mommy 101. You just... You cut for your kids, right? Amen, so we thank God for her. All right, well, we got a, a couple of things we're gonna uh, get into today, um, but I did wanna talk about something real quick. Um, just, and I, I hope y'all understand this, this is, this is very hard for me to, to uh, uh, say because it's just, it just sucks. But I'm canceling part 13. Canceling part 13. And I'm gonna explain why. Um, I was talking to Fred the other day and um, letting him know I had no idea what the internet and social media really was. Uh, really was. I'm thinking, you know, I got my message, I'm gonna get up, warn folks, don't get into the this and the that and this and that. And then the spirit of the thing came after me. Amen. Now, y'all just, you know, I know a lot of y'all came down here because I'm G. Craig Lewis of EX Ministries, right? A lot of people, you, when you watch anybody on video, or whatever, whatever, you just kind of put them in a certain place in your mind where they almost become subhuman, right? Well, this is a moment where I'm very human when this spirit attacks. It attacks whoever. And so I began to um, reevaluate myself and I said, you know what, let me take a break from social media just to, you know, take a break uh, so that I could help folks learn how to take breaks. And, you know, I'm just going through what I normally do to prepare for a recording, right? Okay, so I just set the date. I already got the content, well, until, you know, usually last minute guys start showing me some other stuff, whatever. But, you know, I'm just thinking we about to do this. You know, and God began to show me that I'm not ready. I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere near ready because social media has had me. Can I just be, yeah, look, now look, look, if you, I don't know what you are looking for in a leader. But I'm a human, and the stuff y'all go through, I go through. I've been telling y'all that since the beginning. I got I to gotta apply it to me first before it even gets to you. And I don't, I'm, I, I'm not a hypocrite, so I can't be, I can't preach it and it not change me. Okay? My wife will tell you, I can't even sleep like that. It's got to change me. It's got to fix me before I can, you know what I'm saying? So I began to pray, get before the Lord about it. And I was like, you know, I'm just feeling like this. Well, you know, what is it? And the Lord began to deal with me and said, your esteem as of late for the last few years has been rooted in likes, comments, and what people see and say, it just had me. I'd post a video up and I'd be watching it all day. I just, my phone, I'm just looking at the likes, comments, okay, what they saying, you know, then I'll go into the DMs and minister and I've been ministering to 50 to 100 people a day, giving them advice and just every day. And I'm just, you know, thinking this is life and it's not. So it got me. It just got me. And, you know, 
So, you know, as of late, of course, you know, the enemy comes whenever I announce a video and he comes with the power of whatever it is in that video that I'm gonna be talking about. Y'all already know that. But it just, I, I got caught up in it and didn't really know I was caught up in it till I got off it. When I got off it, I started wanting it. And it's almost like a crackhead or something. I, I just started wanting it. So then I started calling everybody. Hey, what they, what, what they say? What, what, what's going on? You know, and then I'm like, man, what is wrong with me? So I was praying with my family the other day, and I had to repent to them and tell them, I, I'm sorry. I, I got caught up in another world other than y'all. I don't need to hand clap, y'all. I'm just going to say it. And so I'm not ready to do, I'm not ready to tackle that spirit. So I got to do what I have to do for me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some time to just be with my family, enjoy things, take a little break before I get back on it. And then I'm going to get refocused. Back in the throne room. You know, the, the internet just blocks the throne room. Because it roots you in your own confidence and ability. I'm not a celebrity. I'm just not. Amen? I'm a man. Uh, I'm a flawed man that God just picked. So, I love you. I hope you make it. I pray you do, but my esteem can no longer be rooted in who's in these seats, who likes me, who comments. Can't do it. Y'all remember back in the day, I really didn't care. Fat Craig, he could care less. But somewhere along the line, it started mattering to me. And that's my bad but I got to get back to where I'm supposed to be for my family's sake, but most importantly, for God. Amen. 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 So if you got your tickets, I apologize. I got them. I already got them. I'm still going. When I was talking to Janine, we planned something at the hotel and do something there. Just to, just to get together, whatever. Just love, be it, be, just love each other. Amen? All right? Okay. Proverbs 6 and 16 teaches a very powerful... I, I touched on this a couple of weeks ago. Um, it says, these things, these six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that messes up friendships. Yeah, I didn't read uh, Craig 101. I just read Proverbs. The wisest man. Yeah. And these are the seven things. Right? Okay. Six things. But these seven are an abomination. Man, I keep hitting the wrong button. Okay, here we go. All right. So, let's unpack this. Many modern day faiths allow for people to be hated. Certain people, groups, races, offend, uh, offenders, etc., can be spoken evil of and even hatefully attacked in the name of God. We're seeing that right now, right? We just saw an instance of this in New York. Was it New York? New Jersey where the Hebrew Israelites murdered the, allegedly murdered the Jewish. Yeah, that, that literally happened. 
Y'all, when this kind of stuff starts jumping off, we're in a bad time. We're in a bad time. But they believe in justification for that in their belief system. They believe they're justified to take matters into their own hands and kill somebody. Anybody in here ever been mad enough to kill somebody? If, I mean, if you could just completely get away with it and it'd never be linked back to you. <laughs> Man, I mean, y'all, you see, that's what I'm saying. He without sin cast the first stone. What is wrong with y'all? Leave me out here like this. Thought I had some humans in here. You ain't never got that mad? That's just me? I done pictured it happening. Worked out the way it was going to go down. Dreamed about it. Thunk on it. Prayed about it. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Not supposed to be praying that prayer. <laughs> All your prayers can't come from Psalms. You got to move over to the New Testament and balance it out. I, I'm serious. You can't pray Psalm 35 and 64. And Lord, get my enemies and shackle their face and bust their head open, Lord, and get the lion to tear at their flesh and pull their foot off. And, you know, that's what David was praying. You can't, you, you're going to have to go to the New Testament and balance it out. Love your brother. Love the brother and forgive if a man hit you on the cheek, you give him the next. I mean, you, you got to balance it. <laughs> David, I had you in jail. <laughs> this is not the Bible days. <laughs> Amen. Got to forgive folks. That's, that's the crux of this message here. You got you, you to gotta forgive folks. Certain people, groups, races, they feel like they can attack people in the name of God. Matthew 7 and 16. Ye shall know them by their what? Fruit. But then it gives you a little analogy of that. I mean, does, do, do men gather fruits of thorns? Or figs of thistles? So if you're an old, thorny, thistly person, ain't going to be no fruit there. All you're going to do is attract thorns and thistles. People like you. I don't want thorns and thistles. You know, when, he, when the church first started, that's mostly what we had, thorns and thistles. Because people heard the truth behind hip hop and it was thorny. It was, it was edgy. It was, it just what it was. It's an evangelist traveling, calling things out, doing his, doing his thing. So people like that were drawn and their hearts, they had issues in their hearts or offenses in their hearts. So they were drawn to it. Then when I began to preach reconciliation, forgiveness, and love, oh man, I need revenge. Justice. That's 10 years ago and folks still mad. Mad like it just happened. Justice. Can I preach in here? Amen. Yeah. So, ain't nobody gathering grapes and thorns? Or figs of thistles? This is because so many people today have been offended and are carrying that hurt in their hearts and bearing the fruit of it in their lives. Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence because out of it are the what? So if, if you carry an offense in your heart, your life is going to be offended. You're going to make friends with offended people. You're going to group up around people that can't help you grow at all. They'll keep that pain active in your life. You... 
I mean, you'll walk around feeling unforgiven. And that's the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. Because they'll keep that offense going. And you'll feel unforgiven because you can't forgive the person that offended you. The devil loves to bait the offended into traps that they may never get out of. How do you bait an offended person? You just put something on the internet or something, or make a phone call and test their heart. Hey man, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Dude, you good? Well, you know, I'm a, what? Got him. It's just, a, that's a trap. Then once you pulled into that trap, you gotta try to get, spend, it, it, it takes time, spending time trying to get loose, trying to pull yourself off, out, get free from that trap. Some may never get out of it. They blame others and magnify the faults of others to, to the magnitude of their own faults. So now it's leveling the playing field now. So my faults, I need to know your faults so I can feel better about mine. Right? Instead of your stuff under the blood, my stuff under the blood too. Amen? God forgave you, God forgave me. You forgiven, I'm forgiven. But instead of that, you're looking for an offense so that you can level the playing field. I can feel better about myself. Amen. Amen. I mean, the only reason we even name in the name of Christ is because of his blood on Calvary. Amen. What can wash away my sins? Amen. Nothing but the blood. That's like the crux. That's the whole reason we in here. Right? So we can't ever forget, look at somebody and say, never forget the blood. Matthew 7 and 4. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine eye. Now, the, you know, the beauty of being filled with the Holy Ghost is, the Holy Ghost is going to make you check yourself. You know, the old folks used to say it, and it was a little extreme the way they said it, but they would say the Holy Ghost would keep you saved. But I understand what they meant, because they meant that you ain't going to just keep practicing a sin without the Holy Ghost challenging you to get out of it. Ain't that what it's for? Okay. So, to get the beam out of the brother eye... Look at somebody and say, deal with your moat. Deal with the moat. Or you're going to be offended. The word scandalon is an interesting Greek word used in the Bible. A scandalon was actually a trap in a pit. It was used to capture animals like foxes or wolves on a farm. The way the trap was utilized best is when the farmers dug a deep hole, large enough so that a wounded animal couldn't get loose, right? A bait of fresh meat was then placed in the trap. After that, the trap was placed in a pit. Though foxes are known to bite off their legs to escape traps, because it's in the pit, they're too injured and in too much pain to leap and escape the deep pit. It's a trap in a trap. This sounds so dirty, don't it? Man, you doing them foxes bad. The English translation of scandalon is offense. When we get offended, it can lead into a serious trap that can overwhelm and overtake us if what? 
You know, and all our heroes meet. Now tell me, get out your head. Get out your head. Because if you live in your head, you're going to trap yourself. Your intellect can't save you. Your intellect can't figure it out. You need to hear from somebody. You need it outside of your head so you can deal with it. Because if it's in your head, it's in your head. <laughs> and we know what goes on in your head. Same thing going on in my head. Right? It, it just it don't always come up with the best solution. Can I preach in here? It just, my, my mind, sometimes I just don't make the best decision when it's my head. I need to bounce it off somebody. Hey, bro, what this sound like? They be like, man, you better not do that. You know, I kind of felt that. Kind of hurt that on the way out when it was on the way, on the way out. Yeah, so you don't want things stuck in your head where you're dealing with things. But listen, when you go through trauma, especially in your childhood, you begin to build, you know, it's not, I don't want to say multi, multi, uh, MPD, multiple person, personality disorder or dissociative uh, disorder or anything like that, but you'll be playing with your toys and talking things into your own subconscious. Locking yourself up by your words. What you will and won't do based on what you saw or experienced traumatically. Can I preach in here? Yeah. And that builds an offense up as you get older. You remember what you wouldn't do. So somebody does something to you. And instead of giving them forgiveness. You go back to the pact you made with yourself with Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy. If anybody ever do me like this, that's going to be hell to pay. That's what Miss Piggy said. When you had your toys. No, y'all better listen to me. And so you grew up with a chip right there. So certain things you'll deal with, certain things you'll... But this right here, I'll never forgive. And you trapped yourself. And then a ministry comes along or somebody comes along to begin to try to walk you out of it or help you out of it. And because that offense is there, you can't even allow them access to it. You're too offended. So then you say, well, this ministry, they, they didn't help me. So you go to another one and then another one. Can nobody help me? Well, it's not that nobody can help you. Is that not only are you in a trap, but you're in a pit. Can I keep preaching in here? Forgiveness is not about letting the bad guy off the hook. It's about taking the hook out of your own heart. Amen. Amen. I carried contempt in my heart for many, many years for what was done to me in my childhood and what folks did to me. I carried that contempt for many, many years. And God had to deal with me about it and said, you know, you, you, carrying, you carrying unforgiveness, but you're hurting yourself. You don't hurt people by carrying unforgiveness. You're not getting them back. You're getting yourself. The devil wants us to take the bait of the enemy and land ourselves in a what? In a trap. And once we feel we have broken free, we are still faced with the pit or a life of dysfunction and issues. Matthew 11 and 6. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So the devil wants you to take the bait of offense and you know church hurt is like the biggest thing going right now to the point to where 
churches being erased out of the picture. I mean, they're just doing away with it because, you know, and it's, 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 I don't want to say it's funny, but the last days works itself out to match what the word said it would be like. And the way it does it is because the hearts of men, like the Bible said, just begin to wax cold. Well, the way the hearts of men wax cold is men become lovers of their own selves. Well, the way men become lovers of their own selves is they grew up without someone to love them properly. So the, the way they get to that place is the father was missing. So because the father was missing, the child grew up compensated. Oh, somebody overcompensated. Somebody tried to overcompensate. And then it changed the way that person views things. So now you're raising a chronic narcissist who only thinks of himself. He's a lover of, him, of his own self. And now we have the end times. So to try to pastor a lover of him, his own self is impossible. I mean, if he want to be something in this life, he want to be famous, he want his name known, he want to be that, then you can't pastor him. Yeah, people come up to me, hey, pastor, you know, we, 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 we got to leave the church. I say, okay, well, 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 okay, okay. No, no, let me tell you why. You know, you, you, you. I mean, we're not a cult. You can actually just stop coming. No one will ever call you. That make folks mad. Oh, they didn't call. You didn't come. <laughs> you stop coming, we gonna stop calling. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor, well, let me, let me tell you what I'm Okay, okay. So you got that recording studio and the Lord has gifted me with melodies, beats and rhymes. And, I was a far off and I saw how you did Jay Bryan. You just, you just love Jay. You just love Jay. And I just thought for sure I would be doing the background or something on Jay's album. You know, but you, you know, you, you, I haven't got the invitation. I've asked many times and I have not gotten the invitation to be in the studio to record this album. So I just, you know, I said, well, brother, you know, our, our situation doesn't really work that way. You know, Jay came and waited seven whole years before I would ever even hear a rap that he had. Because I wanted Jay to deal with the man stuff so he could step up and be the man that his family needed him to be before he bust around. But people don't, they don't see that, Jay. They just, you know, they see you up doing your thing and they just want a piece of it. And we, we draw that, I told y'all that, we gonna draw that, the band, you heard a band, and. You know, you want to be up there, or whatever, and we're going to draw that too. And if you don't get a phone call to come up there, I mean, we ain't got that many slots. Right? You ain't getting my slot. Even if you're better than me. I'm the pastor, so. <laughs> hey, Brad, I knew you'd be laughing at that. But yeah, so, you know, hey. But, you know, people, that's, that's an offense. They get offended, they hold that in their heart. They leave, and then they go, they just start wilding. It's like, dude, we had a peaceful conversation. Like, it was peaceful. Where is this coming from? Yeah, it's hard to, I told y'all a couple of weeks ago, it's hard to pass the millennials. Yeah, it's just hard, because... They love themselves so much. Yeah, just, and God told me, he said, you're going to have to thicken your skin. Don't, don't even worry about this recording, man. Get some thick skin. Because some of these folk don't love you. Some of these folks hate you. I'm like, Really? Offenses. The devil wants to take us, wants us to take the bait of the enemy, land ourselves in a trap. Once we feel we have broken free, we are still faced with the pit. Still in the pit. 
This is the place where people give up on the peace of God. I want y'all to understand what I'm trying to say here. They give up on the peace of God, meaning there's not going to be any peace in my situation. So let me demand justice. So instead of me praying for peace in my family, in my relationship with my children, maybe you went through a divorce, maybe you went through some kind of trauma or something in your family, maybe you did. So instead of me pursuing peace and praying for peace in that situation, I want justice. And I'm gonna take my disdainment out to the picket line. I'm gonna take my disdainment out to where someone can actually feel my hatred and my anger. I'm gonna express how unhappy, I'm gonna join a religion that allows me to hate a people group. I'm giving up on my peace. Whenever we cry for justice, no, no, this is the place where people give up on their peace and pursue justice against their offenders. Whenever we cry for justice instead of mercy, we're, we set ourselves up to do the seven things that God hates. Here's the setup. You ever wonder, why are you doing what God hates and think you're okay? How can you do what God hates and think you're doing it for God? It's because you gave up on peace. Your situation was so bad and messed up that you say, you know what? My situation just sucks. So let me go for justice now. Let me go get the offend th those that offended me. Let me go after them. Let me go after the preacher that's preaching peace. And all forms of peace because there can't be no peace in my situation. It's too bad. I messed it up too bad. So now let me balance the scales of justice. Mark 11 and 26. But if ye do not forgive... Do I even need to finish this? If you do not forgive, what's going to happen? Can you be that mad where you can't forgive? I mean, I forgive. I love him. I, I, I love, I love him. It's just some things. Just some. Did you forgive? Are there still some things? It's offended. Offended. Y'all enjoying this? Yeah. Jesus taught forgiveness and love for the brethren. But when you are offended, you make room in your heart for hatred, malice, and strife so that you can make others feel the way you feel. Malice? Malicious? I'm going to get him back or make him feel what I feel? You can't go on after what you did to me. You can't go on because I can't go on. Well, let's meet and talk about it. Okay. That's what you did made me feel. Okay, okay. And then you, and then, and then, and then, and then. <laughs> that old Martin Luther King wrote. And then, and, and, uh, for John, uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you just, you know, you just, and then, look, man, look, look, dude, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, from my perspective, it looked totally different. But that's my bad. 
If that's the way you saw it and that's the way it felt, forgive me. We good? Yeah, man. We good. Five years later on the internet. And then he, and then he. Five years later. <laughs> and then you're like, I thought, I, we, didn't we? I, what, did, I? They chose to keep the offense. They stayed offended. Forgiveness didn't pay it. it. It just wasn't enough. Forgiveness didn't change my situation. I'm still in the trap, in the pit. I gave you forgiveness. That got me out of the trap. But I'm still in the pit. Brother, I didn't put you in the pit. You think why you mad at me? Put you in the pit? Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor, and what? Be put away from you with all what? Is this not in the Bible? So certain groups just delete the New Testament. They take it out of their belief system because of this. We don't want this in there. The white man put it in there. Eye for an eye. Tooth for a tooth. Die, Negro, die. They wrote the part. That part is in crayon right under the... Thy brother offend thee, cut him off. The Bible don't say that. Cut his throat. Yeah, but they don't want this in there because this means they got to forgive. Most of the time, this means they got to forgive their dad. They got to let him off the hook. Accept his apology once and for all. They got to go back to the person that offended them and make it right and love them. They got to pray for their enemies, those that despitefully use them. Those that curse them, lied on them, accused them, falsely accused. They got to pray for them. So let's just, let's just, let's just not use the, old, the New Testament. And let's keep it in the Torah. I know I'm preaching. Okay, we're going to go through these real quick. What time is it? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Amen. Can I take my time? Yeah. I love the regeneration, the washing and regeneration of the word. Amen. That's my favorite part about being saved. Whenever I need it, I can be washed and regenerated. Yeah. Amen? That's the beauty of being in this belief system. I don't need a belief system holding my past up to a mirror and showing me all the time. I don't need a belief system eye for an eye and, and we getting each other back. I don't need none of that. I have enough problems already. Amen? I need washing regeneration. Won't he make you? That's what I need. Clean inside. I need him to be able to make me that. Amen? And I need it perpetual over and over. Anybody don't need it? You just needed it once. Who just needed it once? <laughs> well. So, a proud look. These are the things that God hates. A proud look. This is the love of the world and delusions of grandeur. This is somebody that thinks they're all that. 
or thinks they're better than others. You feel you are more than you are and that people should treat you as such. Bible says anybody that think of themselves to be something and they are nothing, they're mentally ill. A person that has deceived them own selves, that's the biblical variant for mental illness now. So that's schizophrenia in 2019. Yeah. To be used by God, you must humble yourself and not worry about what people say or think of you. Please God and what? Not man. Second thing he hates is a lying tongue. Look at somebody and say, stop lying. God hates a person that spread lies, spreads lies on others. Amen. The holidays is coming. Stop talking about people. And I'm guilty. I talk about folks sometimes. I've been known every now and then to say little system every now. You know, I mean, y'all remember we went on to talk about people fast? Did y'all remember that? We went on a fast. Because it was just out of control. <laughs> but, you know, you be talking stuff or whatever, but man, don't be making up lies on folks. If you don't know, hush. Amen? That's why God hates it so, because you don't know. You don't even know. And then people are hurt by lies. Deceptive speech that lures the offended in is even worse. What is deceptive speech? That's when they put that little spin on it based on your circumstance or why they want you to be mad with them. Can I preach? This is where a person creates a narrative based in falsehood to take advantage of the simple-minded. So they'll create a whole situation to take advantage of you because you're a simpleton. They target you. They know you're not going to stand up. They know you're not strong. They know you've been offended. So they're looking for that of offense. Yeah. And they root it in lies. But lies are only temporary. The truth will always what? Prevail. God hates hands that shed what? Innocent blood. This could be seen as abortions, child sacrifice, or even emotional and spiritual murder. Innocent people can be destroyed because an offended person has not dealt with their inner bitterness. Killing people. Amen? It could be in the natural. That's why, you know, hey, if you've, if, if you've done any of these child sacrifice abortions, you know, I talk to a lot of folks in the industry that have actually done child sacrifice. Amen. Can't tell you about it, but I have. You know, one thing people don't realize about my position as a pastor in Texas, it's, the, it's against the law for me to tell what I talk with you about. I'm bound by confidentiality uh, code, penal code, or whatever it's called. So when you confide in me, I can't tell nobody. So when people come and want to know stuff and tell us the truth, what did he say? Was I can't talk about that. I mean, I don't want to anyway, but I can't. Yeah, and my wife don't be knowing. She don't want to know, but she don't know. Because that's my job, I have to do it, and I got to keep your stuff. Yeah. But uh, uh, abortions, child sacrifice, even emotional and spiritual murder, it's all hands that are shedding what? Innocent blood. God hates it. 
Fourth thing he hates, a heart that is just sitting up thinking of stuff to do to folks. Look at somebody and say, I'm trying to stay off this list. <laughs> somebody make you mad enough to just sit up and think? How am I going to get them back? Plotting evil schemes and imagining wicked things to do to others is always a byproduct of being offended. So if you are feeling that way, you, that's, that's a byproduct. There, that means that there is an offense in you. Something in you that somebody did if you're sitting up thinking of ways to harm somebody. He can't be a follower of Christ plotting. Amen. That's, witchcraft. that's what a witch does. That's, that's witchcraft. That's what witches do. And we got men that are so effeminate now, they doing what witches do. Ain't even no such thing as a male witch and you witching. He's supposed to be a man. Voice all deep. Deep voice, witch. <laughs> yeah, witches. And, and witches sit up. That's what they do. They plot evil schemes. Their heart devises wicked imagination. So they sit up and figure out how to get people with spells. You go to them and say, hey, man, my uncle did this to me. Dude. Here's his name. Here's some of his hair. Oh, and here's $50. <laughs> and then she go in the back. <laughs> and I know I just made a joke out of that, but it's real. You know, a friend of mine you know, called me this past week, and he was just talking to me. He's like, man, yeah, man. He said, you know, someone had called him about me or whatever, and he said, man, look. He said, do you remember when G. Craig was doing The Truth Behind Hip Hop 20, wait, wait, maybe 15 years ago, or however long, long ago it was, and traveling around city to city, state to state, country to country by himself, speaking out against stuff, all these radio stations, record company, everybody getting mad. They put, and I totally forgot about this, but God uses people to bring it up. They put me in Rolling Stone magazine but they didn't put me in there to promote me. They put me in there so the witches would know who I was. Rolling Stone magazine is known as a witch book. And it's what they actually used back then. It's digital now or whatever, but back then, it was what they would use for incantations and different things on artists and different things to promote arts, whatever. They stuck, they put me, my name, what I was doing, everything in. Why would you put that in Rolling Stone? They put me in, and that was the big magazine. They put me in Rolling Stone magazine just to show all of the witches who I was and who they needed to target. I forgot all about that. I wanted to forget it too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. But that's how upset the industry and the world was during that time of what I was doing. And that was just music and teens. But that's what witches do. They just devise evil and wicked imaginations against people. When you carry unresolved offense, you will imagine and mentally plot revenge. You will rejoice when your offender is hurt. Listen to this. This is the opposite of what God wants. You will be happy when your offense, you will rejoice when the offender is hurt. Then you'll be angry when they repent. Angry when they repent. Look at somebody and say, none of this is Christian. 
this is what God hates. Can I keep going? Feet that run swiftly to mischief. Lord, this is the internet right here. Feet that run swiftly to mischief. Reality shows, tabloid pages, gossip sites, full of viewers and watchers, people sitting around watching drama for hours at a time. Drama. Ooh, I got to watch the real housewives of Orange County so I can see what going to happen to Lil T. He signed his record deal, but he going to divorce her. He's going to divorce her. I guarantee you. Watch him divorce her. Then you watching the show. See, I told you they was going to get a divorce. I told you they was going to get a divorce. Do you know how serious divorce is? Like, that's not entertainment. Families are destroyed by that. And you're trivializing it. And saying it like it don't mean anything. Feet running swiftly to mischief. People sit around watching drama for hours at a time. This is because their lives are drama filled. They run quickly with mess jumps off somewhere so that they can feel more and more normal about how they are feeling. When you carry offenses, you become a busybody in the affairs of others. Y'all enjoying this message? I know I am. A false witness that speaketh lies. Offended people will always believe the worst. A false witness that believes, I mean a false witness that speaketh lies, God hates. And an offended person is going to be the audience every time. And they're going to believe the worst. I mean the absolute worst. And never question the validity of it. This is because when you are in a pit of despair, you want others there with you. When you feel trapped, you want to trap others. Ironically, the only way out of the trap and the pit is through forgiveness. But because people are so offended, they cannot even give forgiveness to others to get it for themselves. You know, you have to give it to someone else to get it for yourself. But they can be so offended that they won't give forgiveness even to be forgiven. And finally, seven, it's like God said, there are six things I hate. Yay, wait a minute, wait, wait. There's another one. Seven. He that soweth discord, where? Among the brothers. There are people in here right now, this is their only job. They're in here right now. And they're going to call you next. And I ask you, have you heard? That's their job. Just like the witches, whatever, it's just, that's just their job. We ought to love one another. But an offended person loves to turn people against Others. Mm -hmm. But did you know how, what he said about you, though? He was talking about you. Really? Yeah, he, he was, man, let me tell you. Talking about you. That's all you have to say to an offended person because they're already offended. Right. So because they're offended, y'all just don't know, man. You know, I ain't saying nothing, you know. I, I mean, I. So in discord. Okay, well, why don't we just catch hands and pray about it? Let's, let's pray. Let's talk to the Lord about it. No, 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 we got to get him. Well, we pray. I mean, there's people involved and people need help and just come together and, and, just, and just, just intercede. In the seed, 
Sinner seed, sinner seed. Intercede, sinner seed. Intercede, sinner seed. You can't even say it. Stuck on demonic dumbness. Intercede, man. Intercessory prayer. We're going to pray on their behalf. Maybe he don't know. Maybe he didn't mean it. Maybe this was happening. Maybe this was happening. Let's consider all the options first. But you don't understand, man. That ain't working toward my narrative. I need it to be what I say so this will work. Because I can't have you happy with them and I'm not. Because if you happy with it, then that means that it was my fault. Man, this is just a love everybody message. That's all it is. We ought to love one another, but an offended person loves to turn people against others. They love ru ruining relationships and destroying the peace of, what, uh, of others because their own peace has been destroyed. So they side talk, double talk, triple talk, coerce, sow seeds of doubt in the minds of friends and family to break up relationships. Little drop here, little sprinkle here. Just, that's all they need is just a little drop. Yeah. Man, I ain't seen you in a while. You doing good, man? I just, you know, I just thought I'd give you a call. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm doing good, man. We trying to pray through this situation, whatever. Yeah, man, I heard, man, you know, doc, you know, just, you know, watch your back. Huh? I, I mean, you know, it's good to talk to you, man, you know. I mean, well, what did you just say? I, I, what? I just, you know. What? Did you say watch your back? I mean, you know, I, I you know, just, 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 just watch your back, you know, just, just. You know, that's all I'm saying, man. But, man, I'll let you go. See, that night you in the bed. So watch my back. Something gonna happen? That's the seat of discord. Most of them are masters at it. Yeah, they're assigned to it. To break up relationships. Anybody that's happy. Any situation that's good. They want to tear it down. <laughs> that's the day we're living in. Amen. Summary. The only way out of the trap and the pit, there's hope, but the only way out of, of the trap or pit of offense is to forgive your offender, period. The person that offended you, you have to forgive them. You just got to forgive. Look at somebody and say, you have to forgive them. You have to forgive them. If it was your daddy, you have to forgive him. If your mom, forgive her. Your pastor, Old pastor, forgive them. Uncles, aunts, forgive them. Whoever it was that offended you, you have to what? Forgive them. Think back to the situation that offended you. Can we think back to it? Think back. Was it totally someone else's fault? Could it have been handled differently by both of you? Did you pray to God and talk it out thoroughly with him? Do you even know why you are offended? Have you used empathy and placed yourself in their shoes to see things from their perspective? Or better yet, is the path of justice that you are on godly? Are you seeking their blood while you're still alive? These are questions we must address so that we can be healed from offenses and get out of the pit that we are in. The same forgiveness we give, we need. The same grace we give, we need. The same justice we pursue, 
we will have to pay. It's time to get out of the pit and live in the peace of God. Hebrews 12 and 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God and is offended. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Everyone just bow your heads. You're offended. No, everybody stand up. What am I doing? Yeah, stand up. I've been up. Y'all gone again. <laughs> Y'all offenses come all kinds of ways. Especially in a time like this where the enemy is just trying to make you lose faith in what you thought you had faith in. This is the time we are living in. 2020 is going to be the worst year you have ever seen. I know that. It's just getting bad. People killing in the name of religion now. It's bad. So you don't want to go another day, hour, week, month, whatever, with an offense in your heart. We want to let that offense go. We want to be delivered from it and forgive whoever ever offended us. In the last couple of weeks, I've had to make two phone calls. And it's not that I was even offended. I just didn't want them to think I was. And I wanted them to be off the hook if they were offended by me. So I called them. That's all. I, hey, I just want to make sure. We're good. Because I don't want nothing in my heart. <sighs> I want the devil to be able to find an instance to rest in my life. You know what I'm saying? So I want to make sure everything is right. And whatever that takes, whatever that costs, that's what I'm going to have to do. Y'all, I'm not living saved for ABC. I don't owe you that. I'm not living saved for you. I'm living saved because it's right to do. Amen? According to the Bible that I believe and the word I believe in. So I want, I want all offenses gone. Out of my life, anything that's in there, I need it gone. And if that's you today, we're going to bow our heads and I want you to just come up if you just, I'm, I'm leaving the offense here and I ain't taking it nowhere else. Just come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not carrying anything that anybody did to me any further. I'm leaving it here today. I'm forgiving this person. And when I forgive them today, that's it. It's not coming up again. I'm not going to be a truce breaker. I'm going to stand on that forgiveness right now and make sure I'm good. I'm good inside. Nobody's going to turn my heart. Nobody's going to call me and trip with me. I'm going to be good. And I'm going to Stand for what is right. Anyone else? Everyone bow your heads. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for each and every person that has come up here, Lord. God, these are for real lives. This is our life for real. We're really humans here on earth in this moment in time. So, God, we thank you for being so great, mighty, above us, Lord, that you said you're not too high to be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, but in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Well, God, we were tempted and we have sinned. 
and we have been offended. And things happen that hurt us. Things happen that set some of our lives on courses that are, were dangerous, spinning out of control. We've made decisions based on that. We've developed our families and different things based on offense. But God, no matter how bad it looks and no matter how bad it seems, we know that you are a forgiving God. Your mercy, the Bible says, your word says, your mercy endureth forever. Amen. There is grace in the time of need. You forgive us of our sins. So we thank you, Lord, that you can take this offense out of our lives once and for all. So we don't dream about it. We don't think about it. We don't struggle with it. It doesn't affect our decision making. It doesn't control our minds and emotions. We cut it off right now in the name of Jesus. In the name, by the root, that that root of bitterness that is trying to spring up, we cut it off at the root right now. In the name of Jesus. We take authority over the enemy right now. We take authority over the devil right now that nothing that he has planted in our lives, when he took advantage of our innocence, when he took advantage of our lack of knowledge, he took advantage of, our mis of a misunderstanding and something grew in our heart, something was placed in our heart. Right now, we call that thing dead. We kill it at the root. It will not make us make bad choices. It will not make us hate our brother. We won't do the seven things that you hate God. But we'll do from this point on the things that you love. Your fruits of the spirit will be manifest in us. In Jesus name, we pray. Now lift your hands up, all of you that came with your eyes closed, just lift your hands up. And Father God, we pray right now that you will guard our hearts. Guard our hearts, guard our minds, guard our thoughts, Lord. So that we can stay on the right path and follow you in this end time to where you would have us and our families be. Help the strong man, God, to stay strong. Help him to guard his palace. Help the, the, the wife in the home to pray and be on guard for the children. Help the children to receive the truth. Help us all as a fellowship, God, to follow you to the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.